Welcome back to the Bearded Console Gamer, and today, my friends, we are going to be covering all of the highlights from this week's Nintendo Indie World presentation and talking about exactly when we're going to get our next full blown Nintendo Direct. And as always, if you enjoy the show, be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date and in the know about all of the most important developments and shenanigans that unfold in this cavalcade of sin that is the video game industry. Now let's get into the news. Earlier this week, Nintendo unveiled its latest Indie World Showcase, which, as always, existed to highlight the exciting and quirky range of indie games that'll be coming to the Switch later this year and in early 2022. So here's a quick roundup of the biggest highlights from the showcase, starting with the surprise release on Switch of the long-awaited Axiom Verge 2, which, just in case you hadn't guessed it from the name, is the highly anticipated sequel to 2015's Metroidvania adventure game Axiom Verge. This second installment in the series is part of the same story experienced in the original Axiom Verge, albeit featuring brand new characters and enemies, new powers, and of course, a spanking new in-game world to explore as you uncover the origins of the Axiom universe. Axiom Verge 2, however, is not just a Switch exclusive, it's also available on PlayStation 4 and via the Epic Games Store for PC, and there's even a bespoke PS5 version in the works as well, according to the title's sole developer, Tom Happ. Next up, we got a new trailer for the hauntingly beautiful Far Changing Tides, which is set in the same post-apocalyptic universe as the earlier game, Far Lone Sails. This time around, explorers are asked to trade in their land ship for, well, a sea ship, as they explore the mysteries of the decaying world. You'll get to unlock new parts for your ship, survive dangerous storms, and plumb the oceanic depths when Far Lone Sails lands on the Nintendo Switch in early 2022. And some crazy how, I missed the original game Lone Sails when it first released back in 2018, but you can bet your perfectly sculpted ass that I'm remedying that terrible sin by downloading said melancholy slash uplifting adventure even as we speak. Speaking of terrible sins, the recent Indie World Showcase also revealed that Boyfriend Dungeon, a game that lets you battle ferocious and strange monsters in procedurally generated dungeons and then seduce the weapons you were using in said dungeons, is now also available on the Nintendo Switch as of right this second. And this is a move that surely signals that humanity has simultaneously reached the critical apex of both its creativity and lustfulness, which will surely trigger heavenly judgement on our immortal souls. I'm kidding, if you're into seducing inanimate objects of murder, then this game must really hit the spot. In fact, disturbingly, what appears to be my entire Twitter timeline is apparently in love with this game. So either I'm on the wrong side of history, or have an unfortunate habit of befriending randy psychopaths. Either way, it's a perfect example as to why indie games simply need to exist in the gaming landscape. Smaller developers that aren't chained to major publishers just have a greater freedom to follow their vision and take artistic risks. Which is probably how we get games like Necrobarista Final Paw, which was featured in the Indie World Showcase and could best be described as a visual novel inspired by the intertwined disciplines of anime and film that, from its Melbourne hipster cafe setting, reconciles the nature of death and letting go, whether necromancy is cool, and how to make good coffee. At least that's the vibe I'm getting, I'm riffing off the info on the store page, but conceptually and artistically the game looks solid. And the director's cut version of said game, which is available as of this very moment, features new story content and enhanced visuals over the PC version. So jump in if this looks like your thing. Moving on, the Indie World Showcase also revealed that Tetris Effect Connected will be hitting the Nintendo Store on October 8th later this year, which also just so happens to coincide with the release of the OLED Switch console. And a combination of the two would result in an anxiety-ridden visual feast that you won't soon forget. Another important note is that the game will feature cross-platform support, which will make it easier to go head-to-head -head against either your friends or the sweaty hordes of skillful strangers that seem to populate these internets. We also got a new addition to the critically acclaimed Metal Slug franchise in the form of Metal Slug Tactics, which, as the name would suggest, puts a more tactical turn-based slant on the series while incorporating roguelike elements and drawing in established characters from the past that fans have come to know and love. Finally, we got a long-awaited update on Eastwood, the action RPG adventure game which is being developed by the Shanghai-based indie studio Pixpy and published by Chucklefish. And I freaking need this game. That gorgeous Stardew Valley pixel art influence is obvious in the new release date trailer, but it's also clear that this is a completely different beast of a game. In Eastwood, you play as a miner named John who, accompanied by a woman named Sam, makes an emotional journey across a crumbling world that's being steadily consumed by a deadly miasma. Based on the trailer, it looks like it's replete with fascinating characters and anime influences, and there's basically just nothing here not to like, except for the fact that I have to wait until September the 16th to play it. 
And those games were just my personal highlights from the jam-packed Indie World Showcase. There were a ton more that I simply didn't have the time to cover. So if you're a fan of indies, you should seriously just head on over to Nintendo's YouTube page and check out the entire presentation for yourself. But regardless, the arrow of time points relentlessly forward and with the indie showcase swiftly receding in the rearview mirror, Nintendo fans are left hungrily asking themselves one single question. When will we get the next full-blown Nintendo Direct? Now, as it stands, Nintendo has yet to announce a date for their next mainline presentation, but that won't stop us from making some extremely well-educated and attractive guesses. For example, traditionally speaking, back before the world was destroyed, Nintendo fell into a pattern of throwing out an indie showcase around a month before a full-blown Nintendo Direct. For example, the indie showcase on August 19th, 2019 was followed by a Direct on September 6th, and Nintendo's E3 presentation in the June of that year was preceded by, you guessed it, an Indie World Showcase on the 31st of May. And this pattern of an indie presentation preceding a full Direct seems to have been the case all the way through the 2017 to 2019 period. And of course, following the September 2019 presentation, Nintendo plunged us into a 531 day drought during which they gave us a grand total of zero mainline Direct presentations. Thankfully, the Directs have now returned, and therefore the pattern of them being preceded by an indie presentation may also have returned. But beyond that, Nintendo has a pretty reliable record anyway of putting out mainline Directs in the month of September, at least in recent years. So I'd be putting my money on the fact that the next Direct is going to be coming in the month of September, and hey, it could even be a pretty great place to announce that the currently rumoured remasters of GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas will be coming to the Nintendo flagship console later this year. So to sum up, Nintendo Indie Showcase good, and full-blown Direct could be coming in September. And on that note, I'm going to leave it for today. Let me know what you thought about the Indie World presentation in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed the show, please be sure to like and subscribe and to keep it here for all the biggest news from around the video gaming industry.